what's good. I'm Kinell and this is Sinister Cinema where we get deep into the guts of classics and new releases from horror and exploitation cinema. Hope you're all good. Be sure to check us on the socials which are in the corner there. We're on Twitter at Sinister underscore cinema and Instagram at Sinister dot cinema. So follow up them things. Blah de blah, you won't know all these. Let's get into it today. I've got a little review for you of a film I've just rented on Amazon Prime for four quid. Well worth it in my opinion. It's available wherever you do your rentals or any of that shit. It's from David Mamore. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but whatever, we're going into it. And it's apartment 1BR. Haven't you been getting my calls? I've been busy. When are you coming home? I'm staying. They put that system in a few years ago after a break-in. Uh, don't worry, neighborhood's a lot safer now. I just moved here, I don't really know anyone. What brought you to LA? Trying to start a new life. Missed one here. Any pets? No. You got it, we're neighbors. Hey, listen, we're having a barbecue. You should come. Welcome. We like to make this place feel like a real neighborhood. And we all kind of take care of each other here. Does the plumbing do that every night? They want. So tired all the time. Do you hear that noise? I don't hear anything very well anymore. <laughs> You think I'm crazy? I'm at 1BR. This film concerns a young woman who's trying to make a fresh start with her life, moves to LA and she's trying to find somewhere to live, new job and all this like, and it kicks off immediately dealing with one of the biggest stresses in modern life, trying to find somewhere to live when you've got a fucking cat. Or two cats in my case. Trust me, it's a whole thing. I know a lot of you will have been through it, and if you haven't, Trust me, it's a thing. Her cat in question is the type known to millennials as a chonky orange boy. These kind of cats were formerly referred to as, as big orange bastards, but they were later retitled due to associations with President Donald Trump. The community itself, very welcoming indeed, very close, very friendly. A little too friendly, some might say. And she quickly learns that they do not like it when you break the rules in this shit. They take their rules very seriously indeed. And we're not very far into the film and the shit all goes a bit MK Ultra to make her part of the community. Now, I'm gonna try not to give too much away because there's a lot of twists and turns and really what I'm talking about is shit that's happening in the first 10 minutes. But basically, this is a cult film. But uh, it deals with areas in which we're all fairly familiar. We all know about fucking moving into a new place and the neighbours are a bit weird. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me if, who, if the director or the writer had recently got the next door app on their phone and found out exactly how weird their neighbours are. Some proper busybody behaviour. We don't stand for grass in it on this podcast, but we know it's out there. So yeah. She becomes part of the community whether she likes it or not. At first she likes it not, and then she kind of likes it. There's some weird shit going on. I referred to like MK Ultra there. The kind of like mind control, break you down conditioning kind of shit that uh, also a lot of cults seem to use. 
Weird, isn't it, how the CIA uh, put, spent all this time developing brainwashing and all these cults somehow have the information on how to do it despite not being government funded. How strange. But yeah, yeah, fucking cult wise, <coughs> I, 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 I call. I call it's interesting to sort of look at a cult because I mean we think of cults and we think of like compounds like in Waco, Texas or Jonestown or something but this sort of takes the narrative discussing the, the progress of someone being initiated into a cult in a setting that we're all familiar with you know finding somewhere to live and you know uh, with it, it, the setting of California you know, sort of uh, brings up a bit of the whole Manson family to me, but really, w with it being LA, you kind of drift towards Scientology. I think there was a bit of a fucking influence on commentary on Scientology and how they treat people and how they initiate people going on. And there was also a bit of a branding thing, which put me in mind of uh, Nexium. If you don't remember Nexium, you bird out a small bill that uh, turned out she was into some mad sex trafficking cult and she was like the second to top of, uh, she was she was doing she she was big in the sex trafficking cult game but there's no sex trafficking going on here they just want to be a happy community mm, very fucking uh, from the opening credits you've got uh, uh, the camera slowly moves through the community as, as you see the people who live here and it all looks innocent on the surface but the spooky music gives you that whole David Lynch blue velvet cue that things are not as they seem so, that, so there's a bit of that going on uh, I also caught a bit of an influence of maybe Danny Boyle I'm not sure because uh, there's a song that they use quite frequently in the film that also plays over the credits called Happy Heart and I kind of associate that film with Danny Boyle because I know it mainly from the climax of Shallow Grave that's another film based around an apartment but in that one there's no, or there is normal happy people in the apartment already and the evil finds its way in whereas this involves a woman finding her way to evil that already exists within the apartment complex the fucking need for conformity the fucking need to step in line and how fitting in is considered to be the ultimate form of happiness but is it maybe i don't know never done it yeah so yeah fucking shallow grave is an interesting sort of mirror to this film and uh it, it's but yeah get to the actual opinion on the film I fucks with it heavily yeah I fucking rate it I thought it was a really good film I might have given away a little bit there by mentioning the whole sort of thing about what it's about but there is a lot of twists and turns in it and it is a very well told story my only gripe is in one bit there's a little bit of the CGI blood that kind of took me out of it a bit but other than that it's really about the interpersonal relationships it's about the people and it's about the thought processes involved in breaking someone down and how can anyone be truly free under those circumstances and those are themes that resonate with me a lot I, I mean cults tend to prey on people from, uh, from who are disenfranchised and that sort of a lot of people who move to LA or move anywhere for a fresh start certainly that but yeah apart from 1BR banging fucking film as I said I rated it off Amazon Prime uh, I think it was like 4 49 or something well worth less than a fiver fuck it get get it rented the pubs ain't open for another two weeks you got to do something in it yeah so safe okay that's my review of apartment 1BR by David Memore and yes in case you missed it at the start the socials hit us up on a uh, at sinister underscore cinema on the twitter at sinister dot cinema on ig uh if you've seen this film or and you've got or opinions to it that are similar different to mine do you agree do you disagree whatever bang a comment down there so i know what you're saying uh hit the like button because that really does help me out algorithms and all that and you know not many people watch my fucking videos and i'd like to get a few more if that's possible and uh yeah Subscribe if you haven't done so already. I'm Canal. This is Sinister Cinema. Safe.